been in regular contact with the Lucari, and they've recently unveiled a new starship designed for space exploration. They're eager to head out into the unknown, and they've asked us to give them a hand. Starfleet has decided to send you to assist them in their first voyage beyond their home system. This is an exciting time for the Lucari. Watch over them and help them to see the value of space exploration, and let them make discoveries and follow their sense of wonder. Just don't let them get in over their heads. Well, greetings there, everybody. And since this one is going to be going out on this particular holiday, Happy Easter! Hope you all are enjoying it uh, with your families. Now, let's get into here. Let's see. Lucari system, blah, blah. Okay. My dear friend Kamarka, just think about how much I can help. I try not to think about you at all, Mardrin. If not me, consider my wealth of useful contacts. For a small white You! I thought I'd seen the last of you. Uh, 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 that is to say, uh, we meet again. Oh, uh, you. You're the big, dumbled eared Ferengi we met, uh... <laughs> About 20 or so episodes ago. Oh, come now. I'm sure we can reach an agreement that is to everyone's liking. I'm prepared to offer you an exclusive, once-in-a-lifetime investment opportunity. Yeah, and just how much is that going to cost me? Thank you. That insistent Ferengi has been trying to make new trade deals with us since he first visited our system. Oh, everything he tries to sell is either broken or worthless. Whatever happened to Grand Nagus Ram, wasn't he supposed to get the Ferengi away from the uh, accumulating wealth thing? Thank you. It's good to see you again and under much better circumstances. You'll be happy to know that our star remains stable. We've not seen any Tholian ships since the incident, thankfully. Oh, that's good. The decision to explore was somewhat controversial, however. Many Lucari were... resistant to the notion. We settled this moon long ago, after we were forced to leave our dying homeworld of Kentar. It was a... difficult journey for us. Once we found our new home, no one was very excited about space travel. So basically, you all became xenophobic. Ugh. Still, the exploration initiative passed. Considering my experience, my people have chosen me to command the LSS Concordium. It was an honor I proudly accepted. Our ship is ready to go, and you are. Well, let's get on to this. For our maiden voyage, I've chosen a star that is close enough to be within reach, but still just outside the area of space that you've explored, and obviously one that we haven't visited yet. According to your star charts, it's a yellow-white star called 20 Draconis. Okay. This isn't over. Believe me. The next deal we make will be on my terms. Yeah, 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 whatever. arrived on the outskirts of the system. There's a large field of rocky debris and asteroids. We're picking up various metals and crystalline formations. Should we approach one of the larger asteroids and take some more readings? Sure, why not? We're here to explore. La -dee -da -dee -da. Coming in now. Large quantities of silicate, hematite, kefnium, iridium. Crystalline structures appear to be the result of deposits created under a heavy impact. Perhaps this asteroid was part of a larger one that broke up in a collision. Heading deeper into the field may yield more clues. Alrighty. Are picking up some movement on the far side of the asteroid. 
Not simple orbiting debris, either. Could it be... Conzoans! Hey. They're beautiful! Do you have any information about them? I really hate it when they interrupt me. Anyway... <laughs> Intriguing. The Gekli communicate using radio waves and feed on dust particles and energy emissions. And... Oh, it seems an adjustment of our EM band is in order. I don't like the idea of the Concordium becoming a Gekli food source. Okay. Oh! Okay, yeah, I remember those, uh, from TNG episode, uh, don't remember the episode title, but they called it Junior to attach itself to the Enterprise, thinking it's, it was its mother. Yeah. And also, that's where Dr. Leah Brahms found out Geordi was perving on her in the holodeck. I'd like to gather more data on the Gekli before we move on. Any suggestions? Uh, could tag them with subsays, yeah? An excellent idea! We'll be able to track their movements and learn more about their migratory patterns and feeding habits. We'll need to get close in order to attach the tag safely. Although I don't understand why humans do that to other animals. I mean, how would we feel if another species tagged us? Probably not all that thrilled. coming in from the Gekli. Bloody hell. I'd like to expand the number of tagged subjects to optimize data collection. Let's get close enough to slip in with a pod and join them in their swimming. Great. I swear if one of them attaches itself to my ship, I am gonna hurt you, girl. How bloody close do I have to get to him? We're getting close up readings from all of the creatures. Are you kidding me? Okay, you gotta stay within a certain range of this thing. That is gonna be hard with this slug of a ship. They're treating us like one of their own. They're trying to talk to us with their radio waves. That was incredible. What a singular experience. We've spotted a larger group of them in an area not too far from here. This looks like a feeding ground for several Gekli pods. Let's go have a look. <sighs> really, little woman? that several Gekli pods frequent this area. There's a lot of dust and particulate matter, but we can't see how the asteroids are getting broken down. I think there's something we're not seeing on the visible spectrum. Your ship has a stronger deflector than ours. Can you emit a particle wave? We could use that to illuminate things that might be happening in different spectra. Ah, 
bloody hell, you want me to do all the work for you? Or do I have to be in the green circle? And eh, let's aim for the green circle. So I really do not feel like doing the do si do with these things any longer. Now what? There's some kind of subspace shearing here. It's causing cosmic strings to snap off and break up the asteroids. That must be why the Getli feed here. There's plenty of particulate matter for them to consume in the debris fields. I think we've collected some solid data here. We're ready to move on when you are. <laughs> Thank goodness. are reading a swarm of comets passing by this stellar body. They look to have an orbital period of about 173 of your standard years. I'd like to know if they came from outside of the system and were caught in its gravity, or if they originated here. Shall we take some scans? Okay. This comet is mostly ice and dust. There are indications that the cometary matter formed around a magnetic core. The other comets may be more interesting. Let's move to the other comets and study them closely. Ah, bloody hell. did this one.
Oh, bloody hell, why did I do that again? Actually, can I stop this? Yes, I can. Thank you. Wait for probe data. Probe data received. The planet is radiating a considerable amount of heat for its size. Nothing our shields can't handle, but I don't see any expeditions to its surface happening anytime soon. Curious. I'm picking up several large, moving sources of energy. Sensors indicate they're a life form of some kind. A cosmosoan, but not the Gekli. I'd like to study them if we can. Alright, let's go take a look. Yes, this is the planet we're heading to. Planet is geothermal in nature. Its surface is partially molten. No life forms detected planet side. Then again, it is rather warm down there. Okay, is the point we're supposed to get to behind the planet? Yes, it is. There they are. Magnificent, aren't they? Oh, hey, those things from the pilot episode Encounter at Farpoint, TNG. Hey, remember Do us? Luminescent ovoids? I'm not sure how to describe them. They remind me of an aquatic life form native to Lucari Prime. There are little ones huddling close to the planet's atmosphere. They must use the heat and the planet's electrical discharges to survive. Hmm. Interesting. These life forms were encountered by the USS Enterprise D on Deneb 4, someplace called Farpoint Station. They haven't been seen anywhere else since. We shouldn't harm them or they're young. Let's transmit a greeting, then be on our way. Okay. The color display must be a form of communication. Trust. I didn't realize that life forms could exist in this fashion, living off the heat of planets, feeding on the particles in space, absorbing radiation from the cosmos. There's so much to see. Let's head to the next planet in the system and see what's there. Uh, okay, but so far, lady, you are born hell out of me. Are you seeing this? My sensors indicate this planet is completely devoid of any organic material. And yet, it has a breathable atmosphere and lies well within the system's habitable zone. Most curious. It's actually pretty weird. I'm picking up residual levels of radiation. Oh my. I believe I know what happened to this world. Some kind of proto-matter wave happened here. Are you sure it wasn't the Borg come by and scoop everything off the planet? Not if you know how to resolve the chaotic turbulence with a Tarfine reduction. Hmm. This was a recent event. Some kind of proto-matter incident happened. And it wiped out all life on the planet. I think we should send an away team down to learn more. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, give me the clean on. I swear, dude. Oh, not sure I'll ever get used to transporters. Let's see. Initial scans suggest this area used to be inhabited, but I can't find a single trace of organic matter. None. I see some carvings on those canyon walls. Let's take a look. All right. Uh, let's see. So I can see them. Oh, these have got to be the carvings that you're talking about. Okay. Hello, all this rocking in this one structure? Really? The walls of this canyon were worked by tools. I'm sure of it. Sentient life forms lived here. Until the proto matter detonation. 
This pillar here. It seems to be a sign pointing to that canyon. Perhaps a pathway there leads to a settlement of some kind. I'm reading metallic objects there as well. Shall we take a look? Sure. Actually, wait a minute. Proto matter. What? Okay, why am I stuck here? Um. All right, are we getting server look, lag or something? There's some kind of large structure further down the canyon. No shit, Sherlock. Language. Um, proto matter. Wasn't that used uh, uh, in the creation of the Genesis device? Look at the size of that plaza. These people must have had quite a developed culture. Let's take some readings up there. This looks like a town square or ceremonial center of some kind. I see some murals on the far side of the square over there by that arch. I'd like to examine them. They might tell us more about this place. Okay, let's take a look here. Oh, I see shiny. Gotta head that away. Huh, some sort of hieroglyphics. These murals depict people bringing some objects to this place. Crystals or gems, I believe? They built their settlement around this site. I believe it was a place of great significance to them. The next mural may hold more clues for us. Let's have a look. Definitely some sort of worship. Uh, like a shrine or something like that. This mural depicts the construction of this large structure. I suspect it was a temple or a place of contemplation for the people. The crystals were revered by the locals. Perhaps even worshipped by them. We'd better have a look at the next mural, don't you think? Maybe that other mural is indicating that they're offering tribute to their gods? I don't know. Just taking a guess. What the heck is this? Um, if I'm looking at this right, what, this place is their hospital? Their girl, people are coming out of these crystals or whatever? The crystals depicted in this mural appear to be growing for some reason. I wonder if this is a symbolic or literal representation of events. Perhaps the structure needed to be modified to hold the volume of crystals they collected over the years. Quite the enigma we found here. I suspect there's more to be found inside. Getting there will be a challenge, however. According to my scans, these pillars are connected to some kind of massive mechanical structure. Probably the peak of technology for these people. I believe it's some kind of opening mechanism for the structure's door. Can we just uh, contact the ship and have them transport us inside? We could probably force it open, but that could damage the structure, and too much force could even collapse it entirely. I suggest we create a holographic forensic reconstruction. Uh, what? Yes, it would be based on analysis of things like footprints, wear patterns, and local construction. We can learn what people did here, how they went about their lives, and how they made the device work. We'd be watching a replay of history, roughly speaking. Let's start by gathering information from relics and leftover traces of the people who once lived here. Oh, bloody hell. Okay, we got a shiny here. Um, broken pottery. The wear patterns here show us that people leaned against here frequently. This was a meeting and gathering area. <sighs> okay, don't know how you got that out of a couple of shards of broken pottery, but okay. Hey, look, somebody walked here. Based on these footprints, these people had a stride that places them at about 1.6 meters on average. 
Okay. So roughly the height of humans. Maybe just a little smaller. These artifacts were used with opposable thumbs and indicate a likely hand span of 22 centimeters. Strange. These relics should be covered with dust and sand, worn away by time and wind. But they're all uncovered. No organic matter left and everything left behind in its place. Frozen in time, like... Yeah, like they just... Uh, this happened recently. Yes. The evidence seems clear. The proto-matter detonation happened only weeks, perhaps even days ago. We're going to need to make an accurate simulation to continue our studies here. I suggest using modified pattern enhancers to do this. Even if it were just days ago, there would be like a very thin layer of dust or dirt on everything. God, now where are we going? Nope, oh, what's this? Enhancers online. The signal is strong and clear. Oh, we gotta place four of them. Two down, two to go. No, oh my god. You're killing me, woman. You're killing me. That's three. One more and we'll be ready. Shut up. Rock? No. Come on. That's the last one. All enhancers online and standing by. I am so gonna slap right. you. The enhancers should give us a pretty good image range. Your tricorder can then act as the center of the network control for the enhancers. I can tie in my data to your tricorder whenever you're ready. Get a oh, Sorry. Got a little click happy. Note that the alien is using the pillars in a specific order. I can't see anything except for the aliens. What the heck? Oh, wait. Just barely seen a little... They're making the murals match up on each pillar. Okay. So... There's a frickin' Stargate or something then? God, this is hard to see. Hopefully the recording will come out fine so you guys can see it. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do. Okay, where am I supposed to perform this? Looks like oh. some kind of functionary, priest or bureaucrat, I think, would unlock the door by turning the murals on the pillars. The top mural on each pillar seems to be locked in place for reference. We should follow the order they used on the pillar murals. If we can turn them correctly, I believe we'll unlock the door. Oh my god, yes please, just so you shut up. This is a boring... Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed the video and want to help the channel grow, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and maybe even get a friend to watch. That would be awesome. Until next time!